In this video, we're going to graph cube root functions or just uh, cube root equations or expressions here. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is just the most basic cube root. Uh, remember that the number right here above the, the radical is called the index. Uh, for square roots, you won't ever see a number there, but after uh, after square roots, anything above that, cube roots, fourth roots, fifth roots, and so on, you will see this index number there, and it will tell you what root it is. So for cube roots, you'll always see a 3. Cube roots are asking uh, what number times itself 3 times is going to give you the number under the radical. So when it's unknown, we are going to substitute and create an XY table of inputs and outputs. So if I substitute an input or an X value, what's the cube root of that number? And that will be my output. Anytime you have no idea how to graph a function or an expression, always use an XY table. Come up with the X values or the inputs and uh, get your outputs when you run that value through your function. And then you should get a graph out of it once you plot those coordinate pairs. Um, so we'll focus on the, the long way here first, just using our XY table, and then we'll try and get some shortcuts out of it that we can use on the next example. Uh, so always plug in values that make your function easy to solve. So for a cube root, uh, 0 might be my first choice, just because uh, a root of 0 is always 0. So that makes it really easy. So we know we're going to have 0, 0 as a point on our graph here. Now the next one, you can either go positive or negative in your direction here. I'm going to go positive first, um, just to show you. Uh, so the, the easiest cube root that comes after 0 would be 1, because the cube root of 1 is 1. 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. So 1, 1 is another point on my graph. Well, likewise, I could go the opposite direction and choose negative 1, because the cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1 times one more negative one will give you negative one. So the cube root of negative one is negative one. So negative one, negative one is also a point on my graph. Well, let's try and go positive again just to make it easy. Uh, two, the cube root of two isn't an easy whole number. That's a decimal value. Cube root of three is a decimal value. Cube root of four is a decimal value. Five, six, and seven are all decimal values. The next whole cube root is eight. So the cube root of eight is 2. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. So the cube root of 8 is 2. So at 8, 2, I have another point on my graph. Well, I must be able to go backwards in the same way and choose negative 8. And my cube root of negative 8 ends up being negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4 times another negative 2 is negative 8. So if I go back to negative 8 and down 2, I get my other point on my graph. Now this, on this coordinate plane, is all we're going to be able to fit. There are more perfect cubes. You could keep going all day long if you wanted. But this turns up to be the most basic form here. And it's kind of like a squashed S shape. This will be the shape of all cube roots. Uh, I've had people describe it as a lawnmower blade. If you happen to know what that looks like, it does in fact kind of look like this. Um, so just know that this is the basic shape of a cube root. Now the difference being that it, the squash will either be less extreme or more extreme based on other factors in your function. Uh, we'll talk about that in a sec. But this is the most basic one. The cube root of a value turns out to be this graph. Now take a look at these patterns that might develop. As you'll see here, uh, 0, 0 happens to be this little center value. Now when I give you a more complicated function, with more values added in here, uh, we'll start to see a pattern develop. Also, from that center, if I go up 1 over 1, I get my point. We'll see if that is a pattern that develops. Also, if I go back 1 and down 1, same thing. And the next value is up 1 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Same thing from the back, starting from this point, down one, back seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That will also be a pattern that shows up. So let's test that in our next example. Let me clear this off here. All right, so another example, I'm going to make a more complicated cube root function here. 
do x minus 2 plus 3. So x minus 2 is under the radical, plus 3 is outside. This is close enough to where I can give you what our cube root recipe looks like. So all cube roots will look like this. They will be uh, a value outside the radical or in front of the radical there. And you'll have an x under the radical and just like in previous roots or even quadratic functions you'll see this h and k value. So if you want to take a look at my previous video on square root functions that might give you a head start help you see how this is important here. H and K actually end up being that center of the S or the lawnmower blade there. It's H, K. The value of H and the value of K are, are that center spot. Uh, just be careful with your H because it says X minus H. It always wants the opposite of the H value. So if your center value is a positive, it will say minus that value under the radical. If the center value is a negative, it will actually say x plus a value. So think about it as being the opposite of what you see there. All right, back to our graph. Let's see if this holds up. H and the k are supposed to be our centers. So if we look for the h and the k, the h is always the opposite of what it looks like here. So if it says minus 2, my h value is going to be a positive 2. And my k value will always be whatever it looks like. If it's positive, it stays positive in my coordinate pair. So my center is actually at the coordinate pair 2, 3. So at 2, 3 is my center. And we said that uh, if we go up 1 over 1, we should get another spot on our graph. Well, let's use our XY table to prove this, just to make sure our pattern is holding up. If I input 3 into my function, I should get 4 out of it. Well, let's see what happens. 3 minus 2 is 1. The cube root of 1 is 1. And 1 plus 3 is 4. So it holds up. Also, my next point had a pattern of going up 1, right 7. So 1, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So let's see if it holds true. If I input 10 for my x value, I should get 5 as my output or y value. Let's see. 10 minus 2 is 8. The cube root of 8 is 2. And 2 plus 3 is 5. So the pattern holds up still. So all my paths positive values are always going to start from the center. The first one is going to go up 1 over 1. My second point from the center is going to always go up 1 to the right 7. So that's a nice little shortcut to know whenever you're graphing uh, cube root functions that don't have an A value. If A is 1, this will be our pattern every time. Alright, the opposite way. If I go down 1, left 1, supposedly that is a point on my graph. Well, let's check it out. If I plug in 1 for my x value, I should get 2 out of it. So 1 minus 2 is negative 1. The cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. And negative 1 plus 3 is 2. So it holds up. The last point that we should be able to put on our graph here is if we go down 1 and left 7 spots. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... Let's see if it holds true. If I input negative 6, let's see if I get positive 1 out of it. Negative 6 minus 2 is negative 8. Negative 8, so the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2, and negative 2 plus 3 is positive 1, so it holds up. So here is the graph of this function, a little bit more complicated than what we just did. But as it turned out, the shape is the exact same. The... Uh, amount of uh, units or spaces in between my points holds up and is the exact same pattern as the last time. So really, what ends up happening is that there's just a shift. We had our basic uh, cube root graph that we did on our last example that had the center at zero. And all we did is we took that exact graph and we just shifted it to put the center here. Everything else stayed in the same spot. All these points had the same shift. And the shift ends up being whatever your h and k values are. Your h value is a horizontal shift and sometimes you could just help yourself remember that because h is the same as horizontal so that's a good way to remember that the h value is your horizontal shift so it should go left or right. 
If it's a positive 2h value, it gets shifted to the right two spots. Well, our center spot got shifted to the right two. And then it got shifted vertically three spots, positive 3, which was our k value. So the h is the horizontal left or right, and the k value is a vertical shift, up or down. So if it's positive, it goes up. If it's negative, it goes down. So we had a horizontal shift two spots to the right and three spots up. So from our origin or center, we went two spots to the right, three spots up. We could have put our center spot there, did our uh, patterns up one over one, up one over seven, down one, left one, down one, left seven, and we would have done this a lot quicker. Let's see if we can do one super fast now. And just get another graph going. We'll use all those patterns we just talked about. Now, if those patterns don't make any sense to you, um, you can always use your XY table. It takes a little bit more time, but uh, you'll always know what you're doing, I guess. All right, so let's try and graph this cube root function. Uh, the cube root of x plus 3 minus 2. So we find our h and k value first. h is always the opposite of what it looks like. So if it's a positive 3 in our, our function, our h value, whoops, getting crazy with my brush stroke there. Our h value will be the opposite of what it looks like. So opposite of positive 3 would be negative 3. That's our h value. k will look the same, negative 2. So negative 3, negative 2 is my center. Negative 3, negative 2. And I can use my pattern now. I know that I need to go up 1 over 1. And I need to go up 1, right 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now going down, I go down 1, left 1. And then down 1, left 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So if there was a negative 11 there, that's where it would be. Alright, so we just graphed that cube root function quite quickly there. Now we can double check just in case you don't believe me. Uh, if I plug in negative 3 into my xy chart here, I should get negative 2. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0, the cube root of 0 is 0, and 0 minus 2 is negative 2. So that checks out. If I plug in negative 2, negative 2 plus 1 is positive 1. Cube root of positive 1 is positive 1. 1 minus 2 is a negative 1, so that checks out. If I plug in 5, what should I get out? I should get 0 out of it. 5 plus 3 is 8, the cube root of 8 is 2, and 2 minus 2 is 0. So that works. Uh, just more checks here. Let's do our negative 4. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. Cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. So that checks out. And the last one, let's see what happens if I plug in uh, negative 11. Is that what it is? Negative 11 plus 3 is negative 8. Cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. So that checks out. So again, you can use your XY table all you want. Um, I would just encourage you to find that pattern and use it because it will save you a lot of time especially when you have time tests or you just don't want to spend that much time on your homework so there you go good luck graphing cube root functions and talking about their shifts there